We've got Clay in New York City and a very special guest. Congrats to both of you. You um, uh, have been kicking ass in radio. I'm very happy for both of you. Um, and it's a tough business. I've been, believe it or not, my radio career started before Clay was born, Buck. <laughs> Uh, in 1987 was the first I time was, I, I ever was got born. Behind. Buck was barely here. I mean, where, where yeah. was your first, first show of all, Atlanta? Sean, Clay, Clay, Clay was born. Clay was riding a horse to school. Clay's been around a <laughs> long right? time. I've been riding a horse. Uh, no, I I started at a, at a university station in California. They rightly fired me in 40 hours. I had a one hour a week show. It was awful, like every other show on a college station. Um, but I, the minute that light went on. That just changed my life. Now, interestingly, didn't know what I was doing when I was growing up, but I, I just had the radio on all the time. I was listening to the great pioneers of talk radio in New York. And when I lived in Rhode Island five years, I listened to Gene Burns and, and Jerry Williams and David Brudnoy in New York. It was Barry Farber, Barry Gray. Later on came, uh, hey, uh, let's be heard, uh, Bob Grant. Get off my phone, you scumbag. <laughs> Um, you know, very acerbic New York talk radio. And, uh, and then I got hired in, in Huntsville, Alabama. I had a thick New York accent. And you'll get a kick out of this from a story. So, uh, it, you know, I'm, I'm Sean from New York. I, I, I didn't, f- college football is not, as you know, a religion in New York like it is the rest of the country. Sean, I don't even know what Clay was talking about when he showed up here talking about the <laughs> SEC. I was like, don't they <laughs> yeah, investigate exactly. you for taxes? Well, I know now because both of my kids were Division One athletes. And, um, but, but the funny thing is, so I go to Alabama, and it's like, I had no idea about Roll Tide and, and War Eagle and um, – Sean, how you doing, man? Welcome to Huntsville. Man, you talk funny. I'm like, what do you mean I talk funny? I'm from New York. You, you talk funny. What is, you know, I'm here. I'm drinking coffee, doing talk radio. Um, I had a thick, thick New York accent at the time. Didn't even know it. That's the weird thing. Oh, yeah, because you, you think don't wherever you're from is like what people it's sound normal. like, right? Yeah. Right. And um, I learned that I'm a Southerner at heart, for sure, because <laughs> I, I cannot stand New York. I hate it. In, I can't even, the words don't even come to me. Um, guy says, roll tight. I said, what's that? And then I, I literally became a star because of being that stupid. You know, the guy with the new, when I left town, they had an article in the paper. Goodbye to the talk show host from hell. I should have had a, and I left it. I went to Atlanta for years. What did they pay you? And, uh, do you remember your salary? In sure. I remember $19,000 a year. Buck, this is always what we By talk way, about. I think to you everybody. guys are on that station, WVNN in Huntsville. This is what we always talk to people in media. What was your first salary? My first media salary? Yes. It was less than what I was making at the CIA. Yeah. Wow. You yeah. Weren't, wait, you weren't making real money at the CIA? Well, not. I mean, when you say real money, you're paid the government. Uh, you know, you're making like. Well, wait a minute. I salary. gave my figure 19 grand. What, would, what were you being paid? At the CIA, my first. No, 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 uh, not was, at the CIA. Your first, what did you, you asked the first job, right? Yeah, the Blaze. Uh, what did the Blaze pay you? Uh, uh, we can't, I don't want to attack Glenn Beck here. I could say it was less. It was less than six figures. I'll tell you that. It so was less I, than six figures. So for you, Buck, when I started writing online, I got paid a hundred dollars a week. I wrote three columns a week. I got paid a hun- five thousand okay. dollars a year. I, I do have a follow for you. I, I remember the first thing that I think I ever published and got paid for was it was back in the day. So I could I don't want to start booing. But it was National Review. And I published an article in National Review. I'll never forget. And I got a check in the mail from National Review. And I had, like, no money at all. And I'm like, oh, sweet. I didn't even know it was $25. <laughs> I got a check for $25. Yeah. Well, so, yeah, it's not, the, it's not the business that people think it is, especially when you're, when you're starting out. The, uh, the, uh, yeah, yeah, but I didn't, I, for me, I didn't care. I, w- I got behind that microphone. Now, as I'm driving cross-country, I'm not sure I could do a two-hour, three-hour radio show. I'd never done one. Yeah. I did a one-hour-a-week show. And, you know, so I'm, I'm, I'm walking into the lines that I had a great guy, that be- two great people that believed in me, the owner of the station. I'm still friends with him. His name is Bill Donovan and, and just a great guy. And Dave Stone, unfortunately, a guy passed away. You'd love his life story. He was the former announcer for the Harlem Globe Trials. Oh, wow. And had to re- he, had, he just had a set of pipes. You just, man, why can't I have that voice, right? And um, anyway, he was very, very pivotal in my career, <coughs> encouraged me the entire way. Um, two great years, got an opportunity to audition. They granted me the opportunity. I said, you know, what should I do? And they said, no, you got to go. 
That was the answer that yeah. the owner of the station gave me. Audition for two days in Atlanta, competed against Neil Bortz, which was the best thing that ever happened to me because he was great on the radio. He's a genius. And, um, and we had radio wars like we'd never had before. Left there to go to Fox in 96. When I left the Atlanta Journal-Constitution, I, I got a complex over this. Uh, Year-end edition. 1996, a great year. The Olympics came. Sean Hannity left. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm beginning to think that people don't like me. I'm glad I'm glad Clay and, and Buck do. Sean, Buck and I talked a lot about your interview with Gavin Newsom. Yeah. Why do you think he did it? Well, I think he trusted me enough when I said I'd give him space. I'd give him an opportunity to answer. And I've known him long enough to to have that relationship with him. I said, look, I'm giving you my word. I'm a man of honor. I said, I, I don't, I, I, we can get on there and just speak over each other and nobody's going to gain anything from that. I said, you and I disagree passionately on issues and, and I think it would be good for the country to see. I actually personally like him. He's nuts politically. Like the guy, very personable. I mean, he said. You and Clay agree on this one, Sean. I, just I so watched you know. the Clay, interview and I said I disagree we, with him on so much, but I think central, he's a very likable guy. Central casting politician. Remember when he walked yeah. into the Oval yeah. and took that jacket and flung it around? I'm like, man, he's. he's, he's Buck makes fun of me, Buck. But I'm telling Come on, you. Buck, why? It's all right. No, because, because I just know that any day now I'm going to see Clay and Gavin drinking some Chardonnay <laughs> up in Napa, <laughs> talking about how they're going to fix the country. But, you know, Sean, there's, there's like a broader well, Napa thing. Napa wine too. is good wine. He owns a, a, a winery, I believe. Of course he does. Oh, I'm sure. Look, you want you know wine with Gavin and stock tips with Nancy. There's a lot of good <laughs> stuff to do up in California. Oh. But you know, Sean, you know, I remember, and 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 I know uh, uh, your former co-host Alan, you know, passed away some years ago. Rest in peace. I remember the days when there was more debate. Like I remember the Hannity and Combs days. I remember the Crossfire days. I feel like now our industry has turned into. Uh, basically, the libs don't ever want to debate anymore. Like I, these people at MSNBC, CNN, name and network, they n- name a podcaster, a big liberal podcaster. They want. I mean, are you seeing a change in that? Like because of Gavin Newsom came on your show, do you think there people just are tired of of the preaching to the choir from the left thing all the time? Because I think debate would be great. Because I think we would win. Uh, anytime you put conservatism up against liberalism, it wins. And, and I felt I, I wanted to be creative and, and come up with a way when I was interviewing him to make my points but not have it be, you know, a long question or argumentative or disagreeing on facts. So I came in with a pile of, of graphs and I said, all right, here are the number of people leaving your state and here are the number of people migrating to Florida every single week. Including Buck Sexton. Right, exactly. You're very smart, Buck. You have more, more sense than anybody. And or this is the number of homeless po- uh, population. This is the list of bi- businesses who are moving their headquarters out of your state. You know, this is the th- th- these are the crime statistics. And, and this is the cost for Medi-Cal with with the illegal immigration. So I, I try to do it that way. And I give the audience a lot of credit that when they see that and he says, um, yeah, but 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 those companies still have employees here. They're all moving their corporate headquarters yeah. out but to save Sean, money. Sean, can I, you know, I, I talked to Clay about this, and my theory on this is with Gavin Newsom, what you're seeing is whenever collectivists or, you know, socialists take over anything, especially if they take over something as rich and bountiful in all senses as California, they say, oh, it's not, you know, things are great. Look at these numbers. Well, he inherited Silicon Valley. He inherited Hollywood and the entertainment industry out there. But the decisions that he makes, it reminds me of de Blasio in New York, right? De Blasio takes over for years. It's the city's great. There's so much investment. Well, it takes time to ruin things. And I feel like with Gavin Newsom, he keeps pointing to things that have always been true of California, but the things that are his fault, he just pretends aren't happening. He owned a couple of things. He owned the homelessness problem. I played a tape of him in 2008 saying, this is my 10-year plan to, you know, stop homelessness. Admitted he failed. The more the more fun part of it for me was when, and then I had a monitor next to us, and I played the cognitive mess, Joe Biden that has no <laughs> clue that today is Thursday, and I said, okay, Joe Biden could not engage in the conversation we're having. You're telling me you think he is cognitively strong enough to be president, 
And, oh, yeah, I know he is. I don't believe he believes that. And I, I now, I, I give a lot of credit for loyalty. I think yeah. he's being a loyal Democrat. Okay, fair enough. Uh, however, he knows he's not there. Now, I think the odds, and we discussed this last time, Clay, you were on the TV show, the odds he's that Biden is not the Democratic presidential candidate as of now are high. Oh, my God. Ah, Buck disagrees. Sean, been- you're <laughs> killing me. <laughs> no. You, Uncle Bill, Bill O'Reilly, yeah, and Clay all agree on this thing. one. I'm doubling down Uncle on ba- it's Biden. Minute. You call O'Reilly Uncle Bill? <laughs> really? I call him a simple man. Yeah. Kennedy, I'm a simple man. I'm just going to give a simple analysis. Uh, no, well, I'll tell you, but here's the buck. You, you, you're going to probably be proven right for this reason. The dates to, of filing to get. Yeah. On yeah. The ballots, we talked about this. You know, the, they're they're fast approaching. So you you probably will be proven right. So I think Gavin's preparing. Look, and Sean, I think this is why we're we're seeing him do your show, for example, just because of the, the broad viewership and then also putting him in the national conversation. He knows 2028 is wide open no matter who wins 2024, right? doesn't matter because you're going to get, well, assuming it's either Trump or Biden, you're going to get a one-termer. And and I think that the other part of this is if you did have an open Democrat primary, it's going to be a lot of Democrats who get in the mix. So it's not as easy as Gavin gets the, the coronation if it weren't going to be Biden running. But um, do you think that, you know, we had, uh, I think it was Nikki Haley on recently, uh, Sean, and she said that a vote for Biden is really a vote for Kamala because, in her mind, there's no chance Biden's going to make it through term two, so it just turns into a Kamala presidency. You buy into that? I think there's just look at him. I mean, the guy can't stand up. What was even worse than the fall at the Air Force Academy is that watch when he tries to get up. Yeah. And he kind of started getting up and went right back down again. And then, obviously, people came to his rescue, appropriate that they did. Um, I think that's probably a good observation on on Nikki Haley's part, in my view. And I I think there is probably an undercurrent, a battle going on between Gavin and, and Kamala in, in that department. What I'd like to see, the one thing that did surprise me, they've had this Cold War, Ron DeSantis and, and Gavin Newsom, state to state, you know, which state is freer, which state has better policies, which state works for the people better which which state taxes more why is florida gaining population why is california gavin newsom is the first governor in the history of california yep. to ever lose population and he's losing it in mass so i would love that debate to me you think that that'll be- happen i saw the wall street journal gave you credit for it on the editorial yeah. page and said that's a great idea buck do you think it'll happen sean do you think it'll happen it will. I don't know when, right? I mean, Sean, I think at some point it's an inevitability there'll be a Gavin Newsom DeSantis, but I don't know if it's now or if it's in prep for 28. I don't know. I think, well, let's be honest here. A guy by the name of Donald Trump sucks all the oxygen out of the room in terms of politics. Yep. And with all this, these legal wranglings and probably more to come in, in Fulton County and, and Washington, D.C., that's a lot of oxygen. If he doesn't show up at that Fox August debate, it's not going to be as fun. And I you think he if, will if you think I, he'll go to the Fox August. No, debate? I do not. That, uh, that, if you ask me today, no, I don't think he'll be there. Uh, they're even talking about the Florida trial on Fort Pierce now at that time. But if I was advising Ron DeSantis now, I did reach out to his team and they said they get back to me. And um, I'm sure there's probably some internal debate going on. If I was them, two hour debate, Gavin Newsom, California versus Florida. What is your vision for America in the future? Uh, I don't care if Gavin's a presidential candidate or not. I would do that every day of the week. Yeah, blockbuster. Be a total blockbuster. And the country needs to see it, Sean. I mean, that's the country should see. Because those are heavyweights on both sides, respectively. It's not a clay pigeon situation where someone's going to just get obliterated, right? It's a fair match between Newsom and DeSantis in terms of what they represent. Liberals will think that Gavin won and conservatives will believe that, that Ron DeSantis won. To me, the facts are on DeSantis' side, and there's a lot to go at Gavin with. But I, I, I Gavin's more Gavin likable. Even, he's more likable. This is where it comes back, Sean. I watched the interview. Buck makes fun you of think me. He's more personable than Ron. Yes. And now, now okay. Clay makes fun of me because I say that Kamala is still the, what, who the Democrats are going to make president, no and he says I'm like Kamala's lawyer yeah. all of a sudden. So anyway, well, Kamala's on. top at top the a, passage Buck Sexton. Of, the passage of time means that together. We're passing through time. And <laughs> together, we're all passing through time. I mean, she comes up with these word salads. They drive me nuts. Um, that, to me, would be the 
the heavyweight pay-per-view political no debate. Doubt. And Gavin even agreed to let me be the moderator. It's good for it you. Be Both those guys are for smart. It. We're reaching out to his team, Sean. Just you know, we're following in the uh, following in the, in the wake here of trying to get Gavin with us. Sean Hannity, everybody, congrats on your success. Thanks for having me.